Good afternoon um, to everyone. The Honourable Minister of Finance, Dr. Zainab Ahmed, uh, His Excellency the Governor of Ekiti State, Governor Payami, His Excellency the Governor of um, Edo State, Governor Obaseki, um, my distinguished director, my distinguished silk, A.B. Mahmoud, a member of the board of MTN Nigeria, the entire board um, of the NGX. Apologies if I don't recognize the names individually. I'm still getting up to speed on some of that. My brother, uh, my friend, and fellow alumni of Great Ife, Oscar. Good afternoon. Also, my alumni, Tinu, and my big brother that I was thoroughly embarrassed and recognize every time I see him, uh, Aswe Gudalo, and Greetings to everyone else who I might have missed out on my apologies. I have a presentation to make, but if it's not projected, I'll talk through um, my key message, which I'd like to deliver on behalf of MTN Nigeria PLC. We um, are unashamedly trying to Nigerianize the identity of MTN, of MTN Nigeria. And part of the strategy in doing that is to partner very closely with NGX to really ensure that we drive retail participation in shareholding across Nigeria um, and use the technologies that we have to do so. So I'll speak to that, but I'll come to that a little bit after I speak about MTN Nigeria as a whole. With over 68 million subscribers, um, we're connecting Nigerians and each other with a world of people, ideas, opportunities, and hope. Our belief is that everyone deserves the benefits of a modern connected life. And a modern connected life actually goes a lot, lot more than traditional telecommunications. Um, shareholding, trading of shares, stocks, uh, um, investment instruments, et cetera, is a part of that as well. Our values define what is important to us and guide our conduct and inform our actions. Our, our values are leadership, innovation, relationships can do, and integrity. And our strategic intent is to drive leading digital solutions for Nigeria's progress. We're the leading operator in Nigeria with over 50% market share and the largest listed company by revenue. Um, Dangote remains the largest by market cap. We're the second largest, largest by market cap and we're very proud to have received AAA rating by CGR um, early on this year. MTN Group currently holds just below 79% stake in MTN Nigeria, and we plan to progressively reduce this stake to about 65% um, over the next 12 to 18 months. And thankfully, I've been told I can announce that we just got uh, the STC approval for the retail part of the offer. We had closed the institutional book deal for that. Um, the pricing will be made known at a press conference which we held later today. There are 575 million shares um, offered for sale in the series one of this offer. That's one of three uh, 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 offers that are coming to the market. In terms of MTN Nigeria as a whole, um, we have 65.7 million subscribers, 33.2 million data subscribers, 6.6 .6 million active mobile money subscribers and 5.8 million digital subscribers. With 69.2% 4G coverage, we believe we're the leading operator providing broadband on 4G in the country. Um, but where you don't have 4G, we cover 81.7% of the population with 3G, and 89.4% of the country is still covered, is covered with 2G services. But that also suggests that we still have a way to go to provide connectivity to approximately 10.6% of the population which also suggests that there's growth in this business. We have 49.1% data penetration and 48.7% smartphone, smartphone penetration. And we believe there's an exciting opportunity in data, digital, and where we can support the Central Bank of Nigeria in accelerating financial inclusion in this country. We're also very pr proud that we believe, or we know we have the largest fiber network with over 30,000 kilometers of fiber spread across um, the country. We benefit from strong and unmatched expertise, both local and international. And we're very, very proud of our Nigerian identity and contribution to MTN Group. There is no MTN Group without MTN Nigeria, and there's no MTN Nigeria without MTN Group. And 
if my slides would be projected, I'm not sure they will be, um, you will see that um, in the executive committee, we are actually primarily Nigerian. There are two expatriates who contribute a significant amount of value. And 99.8% of our staff complements are actually Nigerians. Um, so we've developed this organization for Nigerians and we've exported a significant number of very, very senior people to MTN Group, including the CEO of MTN Benin, our group executive in charge of regulatory in group, and the group head of strategy, uh, Chika Ikeji, is also Nigerian and there's a host of other people. We've built what we think is the largest distribution network and partner ecosystem in Nigeria. And all of this rides off a very strong bedrock of corporate governance. Um, and so we have 12 um, non-executive, or combination of non-executive and executive directors in the board, including uh, the Leonard Silk, uh, A.B. Mahmoud, who is the president of the Stock Exchange, um, and seasoned uh, uh, corporate governance, risk management, uh, legal experts and luminaries. Of course, our chairman is Dr. Ernest Sundukwe, OFR, uh, former uh, executive vice chairman of the NCC, but we ensured in line with corporate governance rules, he was spent quite a bit of time after leaving that position before he joined us on the board. Um, the likes of uh, uh, um, um, Dr. Mobala Johnson, Dr. Ifwe Komoigui, and a host of group executives, including the group CEO, group CFO, and group COO and CTO on the board. Um, I can't mention all the board directors one by one, but we do believe that we have some of the best, not some of, we sincerely believe um, that we have probably the best board that you can assemble in Nigeria to govern such a large institution. Part of our sustainability program includes creating shared value um, across the ecosystem, uh, and that shared value in Nigeria is tremendously important. So over uh, the lifespan of MTN Nigeria, we've paid over 2.9 trillion Naira in taxes and levies to the government since inception. 3.2 trillion Naira has been invested in capital. We've invested over 22 billion Naira through MTN Foundation um, and touched the lives of 19 million Nigerians through various initiatives, including health, um, child education um, and female empowerment. Um, we have created value um, for shareholders by consistent um, dividend uh, payment uh, over the years. And vendors in our ecosystem have earned over 3.9 trillion Naira. Our airtime retailers specifically have earned over 560 billion Naira. Uh, um, we have over 2.4 million active retailers and that's indirect employment that we believe we contribute to. And over 2,700 local suppliers that we support. In fact, it's a principle of ours that where we can, um, we use local suppliers and we develop that ecosystem uh, um, um, to really ensure that we're giving back to the environment that has enabled us to operate uh, um, over the past few years. We've recently, through the approval of the board, announced several initiatives to deepen um, to deepen our, our contribution to society, and that includes the participation in the road infrastructure tax credit scheme. Um, we thank the Honorable Minister of Finance for this. Um, We've committed to building an iconoclastic state-of-the-art head office um, in Lagos. Um, and as I've mentioned, we are broadening our ownership in this business, really to share some appreciation in that space. But we believe that there's a lot more to do that we can do jointly with the NGX to really accelerate and deepen um, stock market activity and broaden that across a much larger share of Nigerians. So our intention, in this secondary offer that we're putting out is to really get up to 2 million active retail shareholders of MTN. And through that really increase the intensity of activity um, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or the NGX. So um, before I speak to probably what's my final side, slide, I know we are conscious of time. I do want to give a special thanks to Temi Popola. As I mentioned, we've just announced the approval um, of our retail offer to the stock market. And I cannot tell you the number of times that Timmy has proactively engaged me, called me at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 6 a.m. when he's leaving the SEC um, together with Chapel Hill Denham. And I'm not going to embarrass my, my non-executive director by telling him exactly how much he's done for me as well, but I did that thoroughly on our board chart group. So 
uh, I also want to thank him deeply. Um, we have a plan, and I think we're going to communicate that to the market later today, of a partnership where you can use um, the technological capabilities and the distribution capabilities of MTN, the evolution of fintechs across Nigeria, um, and of course the expertise, uh, uh, the governance uh, of the NGX to really work together towards transforming how investments and shares are traded in Nigeria. So we'll speak to that later, but once again, thank you very much to the two of you. Thank you so much, sir, for taking uh, your excellency for joining us today. I'd like you to just speak to the theme of the capital market conference, basically or essentially getting the capital market fit for the future, especially now that we're all trying to make sense of you know the pandemic and just you know carry on, you know, whilst we also deal with the pandemic. Thank you very much and thank you for having me um, over. Um, I think the topic for this conference is very opportune and very timely. In a sense, talking about the future, you know, in a post-COVID economy, post-COVID Nigeria. As you know, um, COVID has reset the world and also reset Nigeria with the pandemic. It's, you know, we now realize that, look, we can no longer rely solely on petroleum yeah. um, product or uh, on crude oil uh, for as a major foreign exchange in a, a you know, major source of driving growth. We now need to diversify in real terms. We need to you know, look at what else we can do to drive growth. Uh, given the dynamics and structure of our country and our economy, as, the, as was pointed out during the deliberations, we're a very young country. Average age is about you know, mid, mid, early to mid-30s. And therefore, with, there's a certain amount of investment we need to make to drive growth. And where's growth going to come from? Growth is going to come from, you know, agriculture. It's going to come from technology. It's going to come from manufacturing. But you can't do all of this without capital. And as was also pointed out, our domestic savings are quite low because our population is young. You know, young people can save. Um, so, but, so, where is the capital going to come from? It's going to mostly come from outside of the country. It's going to come from foreign direct investments. It's going to come from um, countries that have savings. But for us to attract those savings, we must have a marketplace that's transparent, that's open, that's similar to what they know and how they operate their own markets. Um, you've got to have rules that are clear. You've got to have um, a, you know, the clarity in terms of how they bring their money in and how they take it out, right? So once you have a distorted foreign exchange market as you do today, investors will wait because if they, they're, they're, the money they bring in is not going to lose value in the market itself. We're not talking about the returns on the investments. So there are regulatory issues that we need to deal with. There are structural issues that we need to. But all of this, in, in, in dealing with all of these matters, we need to do them urgently. You know, we, we're in a race against time because we need substantial capital very quickly to support growth that we require in our economy. Well, speaking about supporting growth, talk to us about the uh, Edo State. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has been rough on economies across the globe. Nigeria has been also has also been hit, and also at the sub-national level, it's been quite tough for, for states also. But talk to us about how Edo State is maneuvering in terms of you know, how you're also raising uh, create, uh, capital for crucial infrastructure projects. I imagine that you know, you're having to balance or, or you know, there are so many competing needs in, within your budget that is expected given the current environment. But talk to us about how you're maneuvering all of that. I think it's to just focus on the key areas of growth. Um, first, what, what do we see as the key elements that will drive growth? First, is investment in some critical infrastructure. If you were a transport hub, um, as a state. So if you, if you invest in roads, for instance, you find out that there are just going to be more activities in the area of transportation, for instance. 
Um, it's about people. It's about building and developing human capacity. Um, our people are very innovative, they're very creative. So we're focusing on education and training and upskilling uh, you know, people. We're investing in uh, technical schools, we're investing in innovation hubs, we're investing in, in training and training people, particularly imparting digital skills on young people. We've just um, partnered with a major technology company to establish um, a digital park, you know, a digital park in Edo State. We uh, we have a first, we have a first intake in the takeoff campus of the Edo Digital Park, and we're gradu graduating the first set of over 120 in December, and also laying the foundation for a major, you know, major digital park which is going to be on about 20 hectares of land in Benin. And we're investing in the critical digital infrastructure. Benin City alone has over 400 kilometers of fiber connections. We are working with investors you know, in the area of electricity. Um, we have, as you know, um, Benin has about, Benin City alone, not just the state, has over, this generates over 1,000 megawatts of power. So with available electricity, with available connectivity and training for young people, we have we are positioning Edo State to take advantage of you know digital skill of digital markets and of the technology space. Now that sounds very intentional, all that energy, all that uh, money going into tech and going into a certain demographic. As you know, the fintech space in Nigeria has exploded. We're seeing billions uh, in, not just in Naira, in dollars coming into the country, but it would appear that it while we sit on the front page of newspapers, you know, at the at the fiscal level, at the federal level, I'm not sure we're getting that. Uh, I know there is support, but in terms of how we're growing the economy, how we're diversifying the economy, it would appear that they're sort of on the back burner in terms of their contribution and how much of how much more they can open up the economy for the country. What is the response to that? I mean, the way we see it is like the digital coming to global economy, and most of the investments have to occur at the subnational levels. And because there's a market space for digital skills and digital opportunities, uh, you know, you therefore require to be very deliberate in your positioning on which aspect of the space you want to occupy, um, looking at the comparative advantages you have. As a state, we, have, we believe we have advantage in terms of education and training of our people. So how are we are I mean, approaching the digital markets or digital space, we want to first you know, create opportunities to just train a lot of people, particularly software engineers in that space who have knowledge because it's all, it's all about people first and foremost. So our goal is over the next five years to train a minimum of 10,000 software engineers in the state. And to do that, there's certain um, impetus, there's certain um, in, you know, adv advantages and you, you, need to, you need to put in place, which we have started. The second is once you have the people, then you can now attract the opportunities. Um, uh, as I speak today, the, we are, as a government, driving the opportunities ourselves by first being one of the largest off-takers of technology services. You know, by moving a whole platform, the way the state is governed, into an e-platform. So, you know, interacting with the citizens, providing services, but the government is now moving its whole bureaucratic platform onto a digital platform. And that way we become, you know, a very big consumer of um, digital services. That then spurs other, you know, um, other uh, other players to then glean from what we're doing as government. So, if you have to pay your digital bills, or for, as we've done with education, we're giving digital IDs to kids, um, tablets to teachers, you know, creating portals where parents can look into how their kids are performing in schools and what they're doing. That, that just imbues a whole digital uh, ecosystem 
um, been driven and supported by government. All right, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for talking to us today. As of June 30th, 2021, the new gold ETF emerged as one of the most active ETFs within its value, rising by 99.58% from the previous quarter to 4.41 billion Naira. Looking ahead, NGX expects to launch derivatives trading in the near term, whereby NG Clearing will serve as a premier central counterparty clearinghouse in Nigeria. This is particularly exciting because market players recognize that derivatives are critical in the development and growth of the economy through the, its cru crucial role of price discovery, market completeness, risk management, and market efficiency. Furthermore, it is expected that it will attract foreign capital inflow, reduce cost of capital, and deepen the market. In order for the Nigerian capital market to be a pivotal force for economic growth and measurement, we would strongly canvas that the following measures be put in place. One, policy advocacy. NGX is keen to provide a platform for, for, for both public and private sector actors to raise capital to achieve their business objectives and achieve greater success in resource optimization. Over the years, you may have noticed the changes to key policies across industries brought about a wave of listing activity, the banking consolidation of 2005 being a recent exa example. We're therefore actively involved in contributing to policy formulation and advocacy to ensure an enabling environment for listings. Two, digital transformation. The driver of the next phase of Nigeria's economic growth is technology. There must be increased commitment to drive activity in the market and improve liquidity for issuers through digital transformation. The goal at NGX is to democratize finance, leveraging current advancements in technology and forging strategic partnerships. Three, public-private partnerships. The advancements made in establishing the 15 trillion Naira Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria, Infraco, is commendable. The CBN and the federal government have effectively laid the foundation for effective public-private partnerships that can meet Nigeria's infrastructure needs in due course. As a next step, we continue to encourage the listing of Infraco on NGX to enhance transparency and reporting, deepen liquidity for the fund, and galvanize retail participation in the scheme. Four, investor protection. Building a world-class capital market requires strong commitment to upholding market integrity protecting investors and building a market that is fully digitized. Priority must therefore be placed on deploying cutting edge technology to ensure that stakeholders are able to safely and securely access investments if financial services are to be more inclusive and for us to create the much needed liquidity that can attract investors. Five, innovative products and services. In delivering on the mandate to deepen capital market activity, Products and services that ensure stakeholders get increasing value has become critical. Given the increasingly sophisticated financial needs of both issuers and investors, the capital market must anticipate the trends and, in, and evolve quickly to deploy solutions that minimize risk and maximize returns. This is why the imminent launch of derivatives on NGX is particularly exciting. Six, private markets. Private markets have graduated from the fringes of the economy to the mainstream. Private market assets under management grew by 10% in 2019 and $4 trillion in the past decade, an increase of 170%, while the number of active private equity firms has more than doubled. Despite the vulnerabilities posed by the pandemic in the private market industry, Africa's private equity industry demonstrated its resilience with $1.1 billion of, dollars of funds raised in H1 2020, including both final and interim closes, and 81 PE deals reported during the period, totaling $700 million. In recent years, Nigeria has witnessed a boom in private equity and has, and has been described as one of the most attractive destinations for PE investments. Public market volatility, as well as evolving regulatory and reporting requirements have raised the barrier to entry to the public market, leading more private companies to pursue secondary programs to return value to investors. 
As interest in private funding grows and securities regulators in Nigeria make moves to allow investors to take advantage of private market opportunities, NGX has crafted solutions which is aimed at supporting and hosting fast growing private companies in Nigeria. In closing, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, successes recorded over the years shows that the capital market is integral to private sector development and ultimately economic growth and development. Studies have shown that countries with well-developed capital markets experience higher economic growth than countries without, a case in point being South Africa. Looking at our local landscape, whilst we have recorded several milestones in traditional sectors of the economy, it is important that we begin to explore opportunities to leverage the capital market to develop new growth areas such as agribusiness and health tech. I'm confident that today's deliberations, deliberations will touch on many of the points raised here and will chart the course for sustainable growth of the Nigerian economy with strong private sector participation. I thank you most warmly for your attention. So I'll start with um, the first question. If we have uh, Mr. Ike Mokwede online, uh, we, we can't see him, but we'll yes, see him online. Yes. Oh, excellent. Welcome. So really, it's about the, as uh, Motu Baguban just said in his speech, there is a dearth of financing for SMEs in um, a country like Nigeria, and SMEs contribute a huge amount to the economy. So in your, you know, in your experience and um, what you've seen across the markets, how do you feel that you know, these, these SMEs can access the Nigerian capital markets and use it to meet some of their financing goals? Okay, well, Yemi, thank you very much. Let me congratulate um, the NGX for this uh, very innovative and landmark conference and convening. Um, well done, Timmy. Well done to the board and all my colleagues, you know, when we were council members, so to speak, um, and to a very great panel. Uh, I have also been listening to the proceedings. Um, now I understand why. I've been struggling with my savings, given that I have four children. Uh, Charles, um, you, you did a great job in, in, in bringing, you know, quite interesting perspectives to our economic situation, some of which I agree with, actually. So look, listen, to my mind, uh, if you look at, you know, Nigeria's financial system, uh, of which the capital markets and, of course, the financial markets are a part, if you think over the last 30 years, um, what are the greatest things that Nigerian financial institutions, whether from banking all the way down to um, issuing houses, stockbrokers, et cetera, in the capital markets, as well as, of course, exchanges, you know, what are the greatest things that we've been able to do that have given us, you know, if you like, continental prominence and have really affected or added to GDP and, you know, to, to the customers in Nigeria and beyond? And it's simply two things, customer experience, and by that, I mean removing customer pain points and, of course, scale, okay? For reasons best known to God, I've been privileged to be part of the two most um, defining stories in this uh, development, at least over you know, the past 20, 25 years. On customer experience, you think about Guarantee Trust Bank and its ability to create this very compelling uh, uh, customer value proposition that made people want to do banking and made people come in almost like a Pied Piper, Pied Piper effect. And then the other story, of course, being Access Bank, where you go from basically less than 5,000 accounts to 50 million users of your banking services uh, through a high growth you know, uh, strategy based on technology. Now, if you think about what has, happening, has, has happened in banks, okay, and these two banks are not the only banks that have had this effect, okay? And then you ask yourself, have, this, have we been able to replicate this type of success in other sectors? And let's think of the capital markets now, okay? And you will begin to realize that from the perspective of the experience, that's the user of the capital market, and the experience of the perspective of scale, which is the number of users of the markets and count and capital raise, et cetera, and traded, we don't have similar developments. So really the NGX 
its related competitors such as FMDQ uh, and, and the others. Of course, our regulator, the APEX regulator, the SEC and other, and other regulators. And of course, everybody on this call uh, uh, that is here with me and in the conference in that room, you must ask yourselves, when do we begin to embrace these two drivers? Customer experience and scale. That is what is going to transform you know, the capital markets. Everybody has said, look, the thing that is going to make Nigeria win is talent in terms of the literacy, okay, and the numbers in terms of 200 million plus. Until we trigger those two things in the capital markets, we will not, you know, truly come of age. But the great thing is that as far as the NGX is concerned, um, I, see the, I, see, I see the right things in place. I see the talent in place. I see the ability to use technology in place. Now, what must happen is that we must bring, you know, um, uh, all the various ingredients as it was in banking, where the regulators are very much, you know, a part of this process. And collectively, we create a market that has set very bold targets in terms of the numbers of customers, you know, um, uh, we serve. Now, why have I gone with this background? It's important because we tend to leave the SMEs out of every financial market uh, or capital market story in Nigeria. We focus on the big wholesale transaction, and then we forget, of course, that um, the strength and power of the Nigerian economy um, beyond the, the large you know, corporates you know, in the value chains are actually the tens of millions of SMEs okay, that allow those value chains work. And for me, the SME definition I'd like to use is any business that employs less than 250 uh, people. So if you, if you think about their role in, in job creation and value creation in Nigeria, I don't need to tell anybody about that. They are the engine of our, of our economy, and it is them that's going to take us to the China type of, of, um, the China type of results that we, we, we so uh, greatly seek as an economy. Now, even when I was a banker, and up to 2013, that's what I did, I came across thousands, and I mean thousands, I met thousands of SMEs who could not finance their working capital through traditional bank loans. We thought of different schemes, you know, but really the customer experience was awful and the lack of technology uh, to basically do this at scale did not permit us make any dent in this. And I think one of our next big things as uh, a capital market will be a financial market supply chain financing revolution. There is huge money in it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you agree with me. This has been um, awesome, phenomenal, is the, are the words that come to mind. Having said that, your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to stand before you to express on behalf of the Nigerian Exchange Limited, our profound gratitude to his excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, for having taken time off his many responsibilities to join us here today, sharing in the newness of the occasion, and for having inaugurated our conference tagged the Future Ready Capital Market, Innovating for Nigeria's Sustainable Recovery. We cannot fail to appreciate the presence of the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Chairman Senate Committee on Capital Market, Honorable Ministers of Finance, Budget and National Planning, State Industry, Trade and Investment, Governors of States who have honored our invitation to this prestigious event. We're thankful to all our invited speakers, and I believe we showed that in our response to everything they said. Who, they engaged us in powerful and forward-thinking panel discussions, and I'm certain that these deliberations are sufficiently compelling to stakeholders as we play our part and place Nigeria on the path to sustainable recovery. I did overhear the um, Honorable Minister for Finance asking that we get these papers and please, um, we, have, we must make sure that we make these papers available in this, um, in this momentous occasion. We have to thank our sponsors, the Boer Group, the Central Securities Clearing System, the NG Clearing, Flower Mills of Nigeria, CBN, CNBC Africa, ProShare, Naira Metrics, Business Day, and indeed our regulator, Securities Exchange Commission. All our invited guests, 
and all distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have joined us and joined us physically and also joined us online. Historically, NGX has proven to walk the talk. And I think at this stage, we now have to change that to do the say. I think we learned that, we learned that today over the years when it comes to supporting the growth of the economy. There's a saying that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. We cannot journey on this path of unlocking the growth potential in our markets alone. You will agree with me, the collective efforts of market participants, policy makers and regulators have contributed to the significant growth of market infrastructures in Nigeria. Looking forward, we need to accelerate and deepen our capital market development more than ever before. I believe it's something we're going to take away with us today from all the speakers. I enjoin all stakeholders to let us take this leap together as we build a future ready capital for the sustainable recovery of our nation. It's all our collective responsibility to build the Nigeria capital market. And I hope that this lively discussions of today, the exchanges of viewpoints in the course of the conference today will further contribute to the development of Nigeria's capital markets to place us on the path of leading Nigeria's sustainable recovery. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the exchange remains committed to providing investors and businesses a reliable, efficient, and adaptable exchange hub in Africa to save and access capital. Ladies and gentlemen, we bid you journey mercies. We thank you most sincerely. We say God bless you and thank you all. Mm -hmm.